Good afternoon, this is Emily Henderson, pharmacist with the Kentucky Hospital Association. Thank you for joining today's Kentucky Statewide Opioid Stewardship Program's monthly webinar. Today we have the pleasure of Mercy Health Markham and Wallace Hospital presenting on their Peer Support Specialist Program. Um, if you haven't already, please mute your uh, line so that we do not hear background noise during the presentation. If you have a question during the presentation, by all means, utilize the chat box. We will ask at the end of the presentation, we will um, unmute lines so that you can ask over the phone or again, use the chat box. But today I have the honor of, of introducing um, Mercy Health Markham and Wallace Hospital team that will be presenting. But first, um, September is a very important month in opioid stewardship. September is National Recovery Month. And this is such a timely webinar today on a peer support specialist program because this is a great way for our patients to find, um, to, to lead their way and lead their therapy into recovery. So there is hope and there is help for our patients in the state. And um, this is one way that, that we can help our patients into the life of recovery. Uh, I encourage each of you to go to the Kentucky SOS website. Uh, there are lots of resources and toolkits on there for your use as clinicians and also for family members and friends, but also we have links to other core funded programs. And uh, we are very fortunate in the state to have many uh, wonderful programs um, regarding uh, this important issue. So. Without further ado, I have the honor of introducing our speakers today. And uh, first is Misty DeHart, and she is uh, a peer support specialist and project coordinator for Mercy Health Markham and Wallace Hospital. Misty provides peer support services for those with substance use disorder, as well as those suffering from emotional and mental health difficulties. She helps coordinate a grant that involves four other counties in Kentucky. Misty is a, reg is a Kentucky registered peer support specialist and she is currently pursuing a degree in nursing. She has been uh, volunteering as a Casey Law Advocate since September 2018. And she also has experience as a CNA working um, at both University of Kentucky Hospital and Clark Regional Medical Center. Misty has been in recovery for over six years. Also speaking, uh, presenting today is Trina Stalker. She is president of Mercy Health Markham and Wallace Hospital. She is a nurse by background, obtaining her BSN from Jacksonville State University and her MSN and MHA from University of Phoenix. Prior to being the president of Mercy Health Markham and Wallace, she was the chief nursing executive at the hospital. She has served in various leadership positions in nursing, including time spent in the United States Navy. So today, Kentucky SOS welcomes Mercy Health, Markham and Wallace Hospital. Trina? Well, thank you. And we are so excited and appreciative of the Kentucky Hospital Association and the SOS Task Force for allowing us here at Markham to talk about our program. Uh, Markham and Wallace, a little bit about us. We're a 25 bed critical access hospital. We are a level four trauma center um, and we are chest pain as well as stroke accreditation. Uh, we do have three rural health clinics that are attached to the hospital. And so opioid stewardship and really overdose prevention is huge for us. Um, as you'll see, as we go through the slides, we really have a problem here in our geographical area. We were very pleased when the Kentucky Office um, Opioid Response Effort came to us and asked us to continue our work. We actually started our program in 2019 with the help of a HRSA grant, and we recently have been able to secure funding to keep the program going for at least four more years. So I'm going to talk about a little of the background of the program and some of the facts and figures, but I will tell you this program wouldn't be as successful as it is 
or a program that we can keep taking and advancing if it wasn't for the passion of people like Misty and Jessica and some of the other team players that are on our quick response team. So I do think that's one of the, the things Hello. that um, is very important. So why did we begin this program? Quite simply because overdoses were a problem and we wanted to make sure with our primary care practices and the hospital that there was nothing we were doing to contribute to the problem by over or over prescribing our opioids. So in 2019, Esco County um, actually was the highest in the state for overdose death rates per capita in Kentucky. Unfortunately, it does look like 2021, we're, we're going to even have worse numbers than um, we did in 2019. So we did see um, quite a bit of an increase and we decided as the only healthcare entity or the only hospital in our market that we needed to do something about it. This is a little bit about our overdose mapping here in Kentucky um, and Estill County. One of the things that we do is we participate, we participate in what's called OD Map. So OD Maps is a web interface and you can actually use it from any device. EMS can use it out in the field from a phone. The hospital can use it on their computers. It um, is a computer-aided design program, and basically the system is designed for us to look and minimize the time and effort for the first responders to enter data so that we can get solid data on what our overdoses look like. The other thing that OD Maps can do when you participate in it, and there is about 13 counties in Kentucky that are participating, we can watch trends. For example, um, we have a lot of our partner hospitals with Mercy Health in the Cincinnati area, and we can watch overdoses, we can watch events in that Cincinnati area, and unfortunately, you can literally watch them walk on down Interstate 75, get into the Madison County, Richmond area, and then head our way to Eastern Kentucky, or you can watch from West Virginia come around that way and, and come in, I guess you could say, through the back way through Ashland and, and through 64. But it allows us to prepare. For example, if we see something happening in Cincinnati through OD Map. Okay. Hello, this is Emily Henderson with the Kentucky Hospital Association. Sorry, we experienced just a little bit of technical difficulties. So currently, um, we have the presentation of Mercy Health Markham and Wallace Hospital um, presenting on their peer support specialist program. Currently, their, um, the hospital's president, Trina Stalker, is presenting. Trina, if you want to um, proceed, please, uh, with your presentation. I apologize for the technical difficulties. Oh, no problem. I fully understand. Um, so what I was talking about before the disconnection is where we use OD Maps. OD Maps is a computer program that allows us to track and trend um, what we're seeing as far as overdoses. We can watch through the 13 counties in Kentucky that are reporting as well as some of the Cincinnati market. And so we um, do watch that very closely and we allow it to prepare our first responders and our emergency department. Um, what you're seeing now is some of the screenshots related to 2021 um, versus 2020. Unfortunately, we are seeing an increase in overdoses, fatalities, but we're also seeing an increase in Narcan used, and we'll talk a little bit about the role that our program has in Narcan distribution in our area. So how did we start this program? So basically we took the data that we had and developed first an overdose task force. And the overdose did not just look at opioids, they actually looked at everything. Our task force is comprised of some primary care providers, some advanced practice um, clinicians, EMS, 
we have our licensed clinical social worker, we have drug and alcohol counselors, and our peer support specialists, as well as law enforcement and the health department. And so what we did is we took that overdose task force as we reviewed those overdoses and decided we were going to come up with a model that originally we had found in Hamilton, Ohio, and develop a quick response team. The quick response team's whole purpose is to go out on an overdose and talk to them about services. Some of the barriers we've obviously seen since we began this in late 2019, the COVID pandemic has not helped us in, in being able to get out to the households and we're continuing to work through barriers there. There is a lot of stigma um, still around people wanting to seek help for their opioid or their addiction problems. And then making sure that our local agencies really were bought in, were going to support us and understood really our purpose. Um, as you can imagine, when we go to somebody's house after they've overdosed, if we've got the sheriff with them and a pharmacist and uh, you know the EMS and everybody's in their uniforms, it's not going to be perceived as well as if we go with kind of a, a gentler tone. Some of our successes really we saw early on is the outpouring for need for Narcan to be provided in the community. And then just really the available resources. It's one of those things, nobody thinks the resources are there until you start kind of picking away at the onion and you find out all of these resources are there in the community and then gather those into one area, one pot that we can use them all from. So we'll talk a little bit about the purpose of the quick response team. So here in Estill County, our quick response team is very multidisciplinary. Some of those members we mentioned, they're gonna respond to an overdose. They're gonna provide the individual um, that has experienced an overdose as well as the family, some education and some tools. And then the other part of it, and Misty's gonna speak to it a little later in the program, is trying to be proactive, especially with individuals that have been released from the justice system that have had an addiction problem. So our sole purpose and mission is, the purpose of the QRT is to provide resources on recovery options and to assist the residents in Estill County in obtaining holistic care. Um, one of the other successes we've been able to do is help others in our community, such as Lee County, um, Owsley County, Morgan um, County and help them see what we do as a quick response team and then they've been able to implement that in their areas. So I, um, I'm going to let Misty talk about the role of the peer support specialist and um, she can talk a little bit about what some of the services is she can offer as a peer support specialist. So Misty. Hello. So a peer support specialist is a person with lived experience who has been trained to support those who struggle with mental health, psychological trauma, or substance use. Their personal experience of these challenges provides peer support specialists with expertise that training cannot replicate. Peer support specialists are trained to educate and distribute naloxone to the clients and their families here um, at Mercy Health. So our QRT that uh, Trina was speaking about, we um, the peer support specialist goes out within 24 to 48 hours. Um, we follow up with those who have suffered um, from an overdose and we provide resources. Uh, we provide naloxone training um, and we also provide resources and support for the family members that are involved. Um, and it's the same situation here in the emergency department. If someone comes in who suffers from an SUD, an OUD, then we, um, we go up and we offer, you know, lived experience. We offer support. We offer hope. Um, we provide Narcan for them. And we also have created resource packets that um, have all different types of treatment, um, whether it be inpatient or outpatient, MAT services, it, meetings. Um, and then we help them with uh, anything that they may need assistance with, uh, from getting a driver's license to finding a job. Um, we're just really there to provide hope and encouragement. Uh, 
Um, a peer support specialist here at Mercy Health Mark and Wallace. Um, the requirement is for the applicant to be Kentucky certified peer support specialist. Um, and then if the associate is interested, they have the opportunity to become a registered, a Kentucky registered peer support specialist through the state. Uh, and you can see that there are different requirements for the two um, certifications and registrations with the 40 hour classrooms for the registered peer support specialist. Some of those hours um, requirements are 16 hours of ethics, three hours of domestic violence training, two hours of training in the transmission control treatment and prevention of HIV, 10 hours of advocacy training, 10 hours of mentoring and education, and 10 hours of training in recovery support. Um, once a peer is registered through the state, they do receive um, a license number and um, are registered through the state. Uh, their responsibilities, like I said before, they use relevant personal stories to assist other people through their experience. Um, they serve as a role model and advocate, promote socialization, recovery, self-advocacy, and enhancement in community living skills. Thank you, Misty. As I said, this program would not be successful without purely the passion of somebody like Misty. Um, and so I would say to anybody interested in a program like this, it's all about your peer support specialist. You can have the best um, clinical team, you can have the best nursing team, you can have every level of a community partner engaged from law enforcement to EMS to everybody. But if your peer support specialist truly does not have a passion for the program, uh, you will not succeed. And so we're very lucky that we have one of the very few registered peer support specialists in the state here in Kentucky. Um, basically, Misty can can talk the talk to somebody that we're trying to help. And she not only can see them in the emergency room, they can see them in the primary care practice. If we're working through some issues there, she can also see them after um, they have sought emergency room treatment. So there's a variety of ways that you can use your peer support specialist to help. Some of the best traits for a peer support specialist, like I said, has to have that heart to help others. They have to be highly compassionate. Um, I'd love to say this is a Monday through Friday, eight to 4.30 job, but you know, it is not. Um, overdoses happen, unfortunately, at all hours of the day and night. So that's another thing that you have to really think of is how does this look after hours for our organization? Um, we really spent a lot of time developing some after hours communications, some contacts, um, and just knowing basically when is it after hours that you're going to call the, the QRT and when is it that they can wait till the next day. They need to be open to learning new skills. Sometimes when you see somebody um, that is ready to come out of addiction or somebody that is being confronted with their addiction problem, especially if it's possibly by their primary care provider who's treated them for years. You know, there's a lot of conflict management and conflict resolution that, that goes on in these conversations. They do have to have excellent communication and interpersonal skills. Um, and they just, I can't say enough about building trust with the clients they're working with. 99% um, of the clients that we have successful relationships with, it's because we've built trust as a team. And then they're obviously, they have to be able to offer a lot of support because recovery is a very um, long process and we all know it's really lifelong. So one of the things that I have found as a leader, and, and Dana is also on the phone, Dana Steph is our senior project grant manager, is you know how can you support the peer support specialist? Uh, I had somebody quite a while ago tell me that peer support specialists want to save the world, and sometimes you have to worry about how can I help this person save the world but not get overwhelmed, and I think that's unfortunately something we're dealing with across the spectrum in healthcare right now. So we um, contracted with a, a CADIC or a certified alcohol drug counselor that actually oversees and can offer 
support to the peer support specialist, give them ideas, review for quality, review for information, and just be that further person for them. You know, the counselor sometimes needs counseling. So we use the, the CADIC through that. Um, a lot of flexibility in furthering their education as well. One of the things that is a barrier, and I think it really definitely can be a barrier for healthcare systems, and we, we have seen this here at Markham, what? is there might be a lack what? of a true recovery community or resources within your organization and having to try to get possibly a peer support Got specialist it. through the- Perfect, well, I love it. Okay, makes sense. Through- yeah through the Love services, um, especially when you start talking about like human resources. Most peer support specialists have um, have issues maybe in their background that sometimes are a little hard to get through those HR channels. And then just making sure you have positive steps towards the recovery community. Uh, we have started quite a bit of meetings here in Esco County with AA and now we're starting to celebrate recovery meetings and then just that collaboration we've talked about. A couple of ways we plan to continue and expand our program. First, um, it's harm reduction, making sure we're getting out there, we're talking to primary care providers, we monitor um, their prescribing activities, at least ours that um, are part of the Mercy Health System. We talk to them if we are starting to see that inside the hospital we're making sure that we're implementing everything we can to um, be the best stewards of our opioid prescribing so that's kind of part of our harm reduction the other thing we're starting to really work on is our hepatitis c program we are part of the khamp um, and we've really seen some great results with that we did take the khamp stance of they do not have to be sober to treat them for hepatitis c we work in conjunction. So for example, if we have somebody referred to our hepatitis C clinic and they are still actively using, we give them the tools to stop using to, to get into recovery, but we will not, not treat their hepatitis C because of their, their current addiction. Um, making sure that we have, of course it used to be MAT, but medication for opioid use disorder, making sure those services are available and we know that. Um, a lot of stigma education, making sure that people understand what the role of the peer support specialist is, how they can help and, and how they can interact as a, a, a very valuable team member. Making sure you have a recovery community center. Your community partner has to be someone that you can work with and you know that as people are getting over their opioid use disorder, that they have somewhere to go that's not always within the healthcare system. And then I want Misty to talk about the Way Back program. This is a program that she is solely leading here in Estill County, and um, she is working on a number of different things. So I'm going to let her talk about what the Way Back program is and how healthcare can actually play a role in that. So I'll turn that over to Misty. So the Way Back program um, is supportive services that can be in the form of providing navigation. Uh, getting identification, medical insurance coverage, making medical and behavioral health appointments, uh, vouchers for transportation, group therapy, random drug testing. There's a strong judicial supervision. Um, we report to the, to the courts monthly. Uh, group and individual drug and alcohol treatment, as well as any other needed and assigned programs and services. Um, like I said, we do report to the court um, and we are just getting this started because of COVID, you know, we've had some setbacks um, and with the election, you know, we lost some of the people that were on board and were ready to get, get the program started. But we have um, received our first uh, referral and he has been in active employment since the first week that he came to us. Uh, he's been compliant and um, substance free for the last two months that he's been in the program. So, um, our passion is that we can we can catch these individuals um, from the court system and just be an advocate for them and walk beside them, help them to learn how to live a life of recovery um, and just be supportive. 
to them. Um, so we're hoping that the referral process is going to pick up. We uh, do have peers that are going into the jail right now uh, and providing 12-step um, groups. We have Celebrate Recovery. We're going to start an AA group, um, an AA type group in the jail. Um, and just, you know, leave our, our information there and our resources so that when they are released, they know who to call and they know where their help is. Thank you, Misty. Um, that really concludes our presentation and I would love to open it up to questions. Um, Misty certainly can speak to operational challenges or planning that we have for the future. Uh, I can speak to leadership support. Um, so I would open it up to any questions at this time. While you are thinking about questions, feel free to unmute yourself and um, may at, you may ask over the phone or utilize the chat box. I am going to type in Dana Steps uh, email address and if you have, if you later think of questions, feel free to email Dana and uh, Mercy Health, Markham and Wallace uh, have been so kind to say that they will share their resources and information that they have. Uh, Dana is the Senior Project Grants Manager. And again, like all um, Kentucky SOS we uh, webinars, um, I will post the recording and the slides on the Kentucky SOS website, which is spilloutkentuckysos.com. Also, I will email to all of the project leads in case someone um, was not able to participate live. Are there any questions today? for uh, the Markham and Wallace team. I don't have any questions, but th this is Dr. Jenny Franke. I just want to commend the team on uh, their vision and their dedication and the way they've been able to really uh, leverage these grant opportunities to do really excellent work in, in, in a tough area. Thank you. Misty, do you have the numbers right now um, that you can tell the group how many interactions we've had and how many we've gotten into treatment? I don't have that slide handy or that information. I can only speak on the QRT numbers. Um, so we have received about 50 referrals. Uh, we've made contact with about 30 people. Of the 30, there were 13 that have entered or completed some form of treatment. And then of the 13, there are eight that are maintaining their recovery that we are in um, communication with regularly. I don't have the numbers for the hospital though. That's, that's fine. That, I think that speaks to the value of the program. Um, those are all people that we helped. And that's, uh, I think that's the most important that when we entered this, that it was to save lives. And that's what we're accomplishing. I agree wholeheartedly. This is a wonderful program and you're making a difference in your community. And this is so important for, um, for any to all year long, but especially this month as September is National Recovery Month. So um, thank you so much for sharing also you mentioned earlier, uh, Trina, I think it was you, um, when you were presenting about, would you share your resource packets that you provide to your um, patients and also maybe how you um, develop the after hours program? Because I know that uh, with staffing issues and concerns, uh, I'm sure that would be a, a great asset for some of our facilities that are wanting to implement this program. We certainly will, yes. Are there specific questions for the um, Markham and Wallace team today? I apologize for the earlier technical difficulties, but this was a wonderful presentation. 
and um, definitely one for others to emulate. Uh, I did post in the chat box um, Dana Steps email if you have further questions. Always you can contact me, Emily Henderson at ehenderson at kyha.com. I also posted the Kentucky SOS website uh, for lots of tools and resources and other core funded um, programs that um, ways that we can help our patients. So again, one last quick thanks to the Markham and Wallace team. Thank you for your time. Thank you for sharing. And most importantly, thank you for all you are doing for your community and your surrounding communities um, and helping uh, to fight this opioid crisis that we have in the state. We are doing great work in our state regarding opioid stewardship. And um, this is just one program that shows the wonderful work that, that we're doing. We're doing great work. As an aside, quick aside, uh, another um, webinar, uh, which is will be presented by state epidemiologist Adam Baronis on September 28th. I will be sending out calendar invites about that coming up, but that will, uh, he will be presenting on the 2020 drug overdose uh, report and on CASPER reporting. So again, um, Kentucky SOS strives to produce uh, timely and valuable education for you. Thank you so much for joining today's webinar. Have a great day and have a safe and healthy holiday weekend. Goodbye.